All right, Jig, welcome to Talking Music Business with Carol Dixon. Yes. We're going to get deep. I'm going to go deep now. I'm going to go deep because, you know, my show is all about uh, giving the artists, models, DJs, writers, dancers the, the information they need to make it in this industry. In order to do that, you know, we got to interview people such as yourself because you know you you've been out here you've been grinding yeah. the word word got to me once it get to me i you know i i i pull rank and, and get interviews yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i pull out the interviews and get ranked but so as we start you know with your journey you know so you can uh educate these artists out here and fans too not just the artists but you know let your fans know how it really is in this industry and, and how you are as a person. Now, my first question I always ask about the artists that's coming up and getting they, they, they uh, known out here in this industry is when you did your first record, when, 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 when this happened for you? The first record I did was, uh, it was like 2000, when did I come home? I came home in 2011, so. I think it was 2012. I did my first, first record. Mm -hmm. And our uh, this guy named Art, he used to produce for the Cheddar Yeah, I heard of him. Yeah, yeah, I heard of him. Yeah. Our studio, that's mm -hmm. where we used to go. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called, uh, something called Touchdown. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's funny because I never let nobody hear it, but a lot of people liked it then. But it was like, Roy was so wrong. Yeah, that's what I want. I want that raw because you know, when you when you come up, you know, everybody that come in this industry got to know it's level city shit. Yeah. It's level city shit. You just, you, 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 some people not, you, you're born a star, but you got to be show how to become one. Yeah. So that was that, that was that first, first yeah, out of. This recorded the in the basement yeah, type shit, basement. you know? Yeah, was it some basement game. type shit? Is it was a, he like, you know, our guy, he wanted to put me, he just deal from the house. You yeah, know what I mean? So, yeah. it just, and then like then, like, like I got like my first two videos on YouTube, they still up there. All of them was gonna allow me to come out of prison. So mm -hmm. what I was rapping about when I first came home was little, my delivery wasn't the same then. I was still trying to, I was just starting to rap. So yeah, was, so so then you ain't know about the yeah. eight bar, the yeah, four bar, just, the, 12 I, I didn't know. 16. I didn't know how yeah. I wanted to present myself as an artist. I was just rapping hard, <laughs> prison, <laughs> just out barking, just, just barking, you know. So yeah, no, no concept to no, it. So it was that. So that was that. That first, this record, no master, no nothing. Just yeah. put it on something. The lyrics was there, but it was hard. Huh? It was just, just, it was, yeah. man. But it's crazy because they actually played it in a club by accident. Yeah, yeah. And the club was like rocking to it. I was laughing like the truck didn't listen to anything. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was your vibe. Yeah, yeah, that, that was that was the first one. Mm, so okay, so that was your way in. That was your way in. That was your first knowing that this was meant for you. What made you come up with the name Jig then? Well, actually, it came because, you know, uh, in my childhood, before I had a fisher, you know, people used to say, like, Jay-Z. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, then girls and TV from my lips, I had Jay-Z lips. Yeah, oh, they was so, big, hey, he, 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 he damn near 400 million strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all that. Oh. So, they used to call me Jig up. Okay. A little Jig in the hood. A little Jig, a little Jig. And then as I got older, it just went to Jig. Mm -hmm. Then once I just started rapping, just, you know, just stuck with me. You yeah, know yeah, uh, that's what it is. So, when you got your first, okay, we went through that first record. You know, that first record is out the trunk, ain't no organization and stuff. Yeah. When you decided that, you know what, this is something you want to do, you want to be a part of this industry, and recorded your first professional record? Um, I think for me, it was just, one, seeing the, 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 you know, the success of my brother had made, you know, mm -hmm. which I have, brother. Mm -hmm. You know, and him being in my ear, uh, people around me being in my ear, telling me to take it, you know, seriously. Because, I mean, I'm be 100 with you. Like, before prison, mm -hmm. I never even, this was no, you know, I used to laugh at people trying to rap. You trying to rap, you trying to rap with in Detroit. <laughs> but, you know like that? Yeah, so, but then, like, now I come home, I'm doing all that time, I come home, and, I mean, being realistic, you know, for me, for, for whatever reason, I, I started later than most. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Okay. And, um, and for whatever reason, once it got to pick it up so quickly, mm -hmm. and the response and the feedback I was getting back was so positive, so quick. Okay. And when I tell people I don't even rap for a year and a half, two years, they don't believe me. It's like I feel like God got me. I woke up one day, I just feel like God had me 
doing it for a reason. I don't know what reason. I just feel like it was a reason because for the first time in my life, I'm doing some positive, not getting in trouble. And it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's paying off. You know, it's actually, it's paying off. I'm getting, and it, I, I ain't gonna lie, I came home, I tried to work. Everybody tried things. Yeah, you know, and just at the end of the day, I, I, I feel like if I, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it all. And that meant everything. I sacrificed. I quit taking them trips. We rap about, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You gotta sacrifice. Yeah. And you can't, cause you, I was trying to do 50 50. I was trying to be a street nigga and do it. And it. Nah, you really gotta. Dive all the way in. Okay, you gotta, it's, it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. That's what people don't understand in this music industry, especially the hip hop side of things. And it's, it's not the way it used to be. You know, people would come in, like A&R's would pick rappers, he or she, off the streets and they develop them, you know, from the ground up. So now you have to actually put a lot of time into it and, and, and create your craft and to create your brand in order to be recognized in this industry as far as the fans. I love it. No, let it be. I let everybody. Every time I let it be, doesn't let it know you are important. <laughs> you important. So don't stop it. If it's silent, something else. So I'm wanting people to hear that, to hear the beeps and stuff. So that record, what was that first recorded record that was professional and said, you know what, let me do this here? The first, the first record that really got me, like, um, it was a song I did. It was called, it actually was a freestyle. It was mm -hmm. called, it's on YouTube. It's called Already Get Freestyle. Mm -hmm. I recorded it at. White Mike Studios. Oh, yeah. White Mike been around. So Luke White Mike. He's been messing, out yeah, in a minute. Yeah, I was Keep messing around with uh, Big Mike and his real street cat. I was messing with them. You know, uh, family. And uh, I went to a studio and did this kind of little freestyle. Little, just straight bars. Mm -hmm. And hearing it at that studio. Mm -hmm. And hearing, you know, the mix down and actually hearing myself and it was like basically professionally at his studio was like wow and then when I find I think the first song I actually did it I think it was the, the playing crazy song. Yeah. yeah. Playing crazy the song called Playing Crazy. It was so it's, it's a versatile song because you know I make my music off of me. I really don't I make the trace songs for Okay, but but, at, but at the same time, I really I don't I don't cater to Detroit because you can't. I mean, the industry is not made to cater yeah. just city to city. Yeah. it's about being on them top billboard yeah. shows. That, it, that's it, that's the mean. level you want yeah, to be. That's, the level you know, that's why I try to right. educate people. On, it's not a just stop saying it's for your city, but do what you got to do yeah. for your city. For your city. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, it's about actually seeing your name on the billboard charts and seeing that your song is charting up. Yeah. Because you deliver music on a national level, yeah. not a local and level. And that's my whole so, thing. So yeah. I'm thinking the Playing Crazy song, which is the video on YouTube, was the first song that really got for people. It's like, I mean, doing my Twitter up, my Instagram, like, man, bro, this song is different. It still had that street edge to it, but it was versatile. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And once I did that song and dropped that, it was like, um, that was your, That was seeing that, you know, what you're doing is really taking yeah. off. It's yeah. taking off. Yeah. Damn. Okay, so I mean, with all that being said, we about to dip into it. How many? Okay, what what was your first? You had a first man. I know about your mixtape you got out now. I like it, it's yeah, fire. Yeah, but yeah. what was your first mixtape? Welcome to High City Edge. My first mixtape it was released January 2013. Okay. So okay. I think I dropped Rhea a year later, January 2013. All right, Rhea. Look at that, Rhea. I like that. Real. So well, how, how, how did that work for you? Your first mix? The way my city was, it was, uh, it's always be dear to me. That was my first. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, uh, it's like they call it a good classic. It, was, it, was, it wasn't well, like, well around the real, of course, but every song on there was just, at that time, I was just trying to get an introduction. Mm -hmm. That was another reason I started rapping, because I came home. And seen Peasy, and seen the, uh, the whole team inside the Dope Boys Cash out of the bed. Uh, it was all from, you know, Peasy and Bed, we from the uh, uh, east side, 42, mm -hmm. but we not from the same neighborhood. Okay, but the east side, huge. Yeah, huge. You know what I'm saying? Man. So I seen all these different rappers from east to west, mm -hmm. but wasn't nobody from my neighborhood with a microphone. All right. You know hey, hey, you put your bid yeah, in. You so putting your bid in? That's what you. That's why I called it Welcome to Hive City because okay. uh, we call our neighborhood, you know, uh, 
so it's gonna be different there. It is, cause I done heard the red zone yeah, yeah. and all that. Uh, Hive City, Hive City. I don't know where to walk. Yeah. I don't know where to walk. Yeah. Hive City for my little homie, uh, Ehi, my little man, he doing right. So we just I hear that, man. Yeah, so we so get caught up in the system, but hey. So we you know, it's called Hive City, so that's why I made the work in the Hive City. I just mm -hmm. basically put it, brought everybody to it, and I really just told the story like it was, it was it was real raw. The whole CD was straight street. Okay. You know, so okay. I really I had probably about one change of pace on. I really mm -hmm. wasn't at that time. I wasn't aiming to be a versatile. Yeah. I was just trying to let people know. The streets is here. Yeah. Your hood is yeah, here. Yeah. You validating your hood. Yeah. You yeah. putting your mark in this game. So yeah. that that was that mixtape. Yeah. So how did how how did that do for you? It did. It, 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 it made it people. Created a buzz. Yeah, it, it created, created a buzz and it made people. What it really did was it made people want to see how I follow up. You know, because it really did like it. It, it, it got me you know on the east side anyway, mm -hmm. before east side, you know, but he had people like uh, hearing something about this hard work jig, like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But what I did was also I dropped the I then dropped the video for every song on the CD. Like, okay, back that's what I'm about to ask next. So, back to back. so they can find videos of yeah. all this here yeah, to kinda let you know what it is. Taking yeah. hard work jig and you will see them, you know, they're, they're up there and I that's why I grabbed the attention. This is around the same time when Bears had got locked up. Okay. So when he got locked up you know, it wasn't, you know, it's not to me, people, solo artists out here now, it's a whole bunch of groups coming out. So yes. when he got locked up, it was kind of open. You know? Okay. So open. I used that time to just keep dropping videos of the Super Ray. Mm -hmm. And then basically. It created a it created, solid fan base. Yeah, huh? And then. Underground, solid fan base. The more and more I started working, the better I got, because I'm still new to this. So I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm learning. I, I hone my craft working on this re up. And I found my form and mm -hmm. you know, it got so versatile. And then when I dropped the re up, it just blew people away. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So, this last one, so the progress is getting better and better. You're getting shows not only here in Detroit, you're actually expanding, which is a good thing. You bring that outside of Detroit, hitting other cities because you need to do that. That's to spread your brand. Yeah. Um, this mixtape, you just dropped it. I got it. I like it. Yeah. What, what, that, that's showing your creativity as being versatile? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you can go down that list of that whole track and it, it'll be I may I try to make songs that never have an expiration date on. Okay. You know, that's and, small. And, and, and you know, it, it won't get if you go down that track list, you can play numerous amount of my songs in different Settings, yeah, you know so and you're not just you, 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 it ain't about the hood, though. yeah. It's not about you the didn't, hood, you didn't carried it out where well, you got that club banger, yeah. you got that reality record, yeah. you got that female driven record, yeah. you got that radio record. Yeah. So you, you, you cater into the industry, I'm not not that's why I'm about to step into yeah. the industry, now, yeah, with you and, and talk about that. Cater, cater to them, like for the because. You know, you, 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 and it's not like I say, it's not that I'm just, I'm doing it for it's just, that's what's in me. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. what, like, I write what I go through. Mm -hmm. you know of course. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I write every, like, my, that whole re up, everybody knew every situation I was going through. So mm -hmm. I, write, I write about it. That's the only way I can I write. I that's the only way you can relate you know and be saying? real. So, with it. Okay. Like, that's just the way it come out. You know, mm -hmm. and at, at the end of the day, like I said, no, no, I love my city, but I'm doing this for a greater cause. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're showing your professionalism as an artist yeah. and that's what people got to understand that the music industry is a profession. Yes. It's not a game, it's not a hobby, it's a profession. So either, they have a few out here that's hobbying it out, you know, doing it for a hobby. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they, they, I call them hood celebrities, but mm -hmm. then they have people that's taking it as you know, what is your goal actually to be there? Don't you want a plaque on the wall? Don't you want to be recognized for your musical talent? And you know, because there's a lot of stuff that people are actually appreciated for. You know, producers getting you know, writers and artists and and the craft of making music that people can relate to. That is the goal. That's the ultimate goal. So the title of this last mix say why you came up with that name. Yeah, yeah, just because it was the, it was the second go round, and you know, anytime we, you know, in the dope game when you read up, you up in the package, you, know mm -hmm. you up in the, you up in the bag. Mm -hmm. This time I was, I was, I was, I was up in the stakes. I was up in the bag. I was, I was getting more, more versatile for the show. Mm -hmm. and the first one I showed the East Side, the re up I showed the whole city. 
Mm-hmm. Show the whole, and then now it's to the point where it's branching off to the, the Midwest, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So mm-hmm. I, was, it's, I'm, I was just reading up, you know. Um, like this one now I'm working on, I'm just, it's working on see too. Okay. Going back to the streets, you know, I'm going to drop yeah. down for the summer, some summer back. Yeah, yeah, summer, okay. You know? yeah, the popping and trying. Yeah, you know, so. The re-up, I just was just up in the package, and then I was coming back at them, and I was coming back, coming back at them with, was something ten times better than what Welcome Hive City was, and mm-hmm. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was aiming to prove and show it, and I did. You know, I did. I got like, you know, fan base been picked up. You know, mm-hmm. followers been picked up. I got, I got my peers telling me, I mean, your favorite rappers, favorite rappers telling me, you know, something like, bro, you, you step your game you up, huh? You know, yeah. that, you know, so. <laughs> You uh, stepped your game up. You're making yourself uh, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Being on that level, uh, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. He came out and uh, uh, people, you know, a few months back, he, he he named a few artists that came out during his time, which he's been doing this 10 years now. Yeah. But the past two years is his two years he's been really taking over the industry. Yeah. He has tremendously yeah. well. Uh, how did you take his his lyrical comeback on that? A lot of people said he did say that he disrespectful, but me, I took it as he stepped up the game yeah. and, and calling out real rappers and saying if you bout it, deliver. That's how I take it. I never looked at it as like this. Like, you know, it's, it's just call like, and then at the end of the day, you gotta stand. Only, only like the, 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 the great artists and true competitors didn't take it as a big yeah, bills and straight to Twitter. I, that's what I You know mean. what I'm saying? It was like, hey man, he, you know, and then Meek got, got back at him and they laughed about it. It's yeah. competition, man. Yeah. The game, we was getting too friendly. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We got too friendly. They got too many friendly be, songs. Yeah, nice. yeah, one day one, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you did that. But yeah. the competitive, that's what make it. Keep the creative juices flowing in yes. the song. It's not know? no beef, no yeah. one fight, pull out the guns mm-hmm. type. He just said, you know, no disrespect, I'm murdering you niggas. Yeah. And you know what? When he said that, I didn't. Well, they can't understand that when he said murder, he murdered them lyrically. Yeah, lyrically. He's not, not talking about murder. shooting yeah, your guns in and shoot you out. He just spoke what he. I listened to his verse ten times and then some. I said this nigga yes, then man. spit some shit. It was mad about the king and your stuff. I'm like, man, no, he's not. He's he just, you up. He just he, waking he's you up. He can't up. take a title that wasn't given to him. Right. Like he not taking a title right. that wasn't given to him. It goes by the sales. If he said that his sales was there, trust me. I remember I, I talked about that uh, in my uh, interview I did with Detroit when um, they asked me about my brother and you know, Vez calling himself the King of Detroit. People were mad about it. I said, well, people start calling Vez King of Detroit. He didn't mm-hmm. agree with it, but the number's not lying right now. Yep, that's all. The number's across the board. You gotta respect that. I was like, no disrespect to them. They, they didn't do this stuff. They, did, they wasn't, the avenue he's going, mm-hmm. of course, he's, uh, Blade is the great label will always be, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But as far as numbers and trying to go to that next level, you see? I, I watch the, I watch him, watch this boy I get six dollars on the show. This yep. boy get six dollars. I show. go off numbers. Oh mm-hmm. man, that's what and I go so off numbers. He wasn't. See, y'all wasn't king of South when he said it. Yeah. And when he said it, the numbers went lying. And guess what? Nobody could hold a yep. camera to him. Nope. So. So who, who would knock it? I'm talking about that's what people gotta understand. I don't knock nothing that is laid out in black and white. You know, if it's said, you know, respect it. If you can't get it, better yourself and, and try to take it. I mean, titles are meant to be taken. You see, they have champs in the game. Yeah, that's what I'm Titles are meant to be taken. Hey, I said it in my song, No Love. You don't like he said he keep trying to put him on. That's all you can miss with the sneak disc, just pull him on. That's it, they got respect for gay. Well, with the hip hop industry the way it is today, how do you feel about the rappers that are making a difference? With their style of music, which I do, I salute Two Chain. Two Chain been in the game two years, yeah. independent. This man have locked the industry down from the streets, from being Titty Boy yeah. to Two Chain to now he didn't crossed over, making that crossover money. How do you feel about the music industry? Today? Uh, I, feel the, I feel the music industry is just if you how they gotta like like you said the change is not like how it used to be. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, if you, I think it's actually, I think it's easier mm-hmm. to get into the game. People don't think so. I think it's easier now because, like I said back then, you had to, they had to come find you. They might want to put you in artist development, hold mm-hmm. you for two years, yeah. and all that stuff. But <laughs> said, now, if you got a hot song and it take off, 
Shit, they gonna be all cheap like white on rice. Now you don't even look at like I ain't one of the artists, which is he younger than me, but I ain't gonna lie. Every song he probably on everything, Rich Homie Quan right now. Oh yeah, oh I they don't understand that. Twenty three, he, he, he so hot in the south. He ain't even sign right now. This dude is one of the hottest things he smoking in the south. Make, Cause I'm from the south. He make industry money, and not even sign. People oh, don't know that. That's off, a small off, thing. I know it. And that's the route I would love to go. I'm just. And that's what it and, should be. You don't tie yourself to labels anymore. And the way um. He do it is like the reason why I like I, I I just you can listen to him and know he been through something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know he he lived it. He lived it, and he straight up with it, and he doing yeah. what he got to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think instead of the game, I think instead of the game is it's, it's it's if you want it, people are like oh you gotta you know it, it, every 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 everything has politics. Everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. So that's not even no. Question. No question. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just about is you, are it's you, all how you create it. How you create how you mess it. Yeah, you gotta be creative with it and kinda use your method and, and your, your strong parts and to lock it in. Cause what all this I keep telling all this. You know, the industry do run and we do is all politics and all and who you know. But at the end of the day, nobody is not looking at the fact all you need is your fan base. Yeah. If you can lock your fan base down, yeah. there is no question on nothing else. And I, I, I really, 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 really keep my eye on it. And I really salute the guys. Not the ones in 20, not the ones that's even in their 29, 30, 30, the ones that still keeping themselves relevant 36 plus. Of course, you know, know the, what? The name it E40 and, yeah. and, and Tusha. Yeah. E40 yeah. and Tusha, they still in this game. Yeah. And know what? And he, I think two for, uh, two short ain't shame to say, you know, two short 50 years old. Yeah. He's 50 years old and still rocking crowds, yeah. still on the level. People be requesting him to get yeah. on their music. So, you know. You got to look at guys that you know, you know, you got the, you got the babies, you got mm -hmm. the best in their late thirties, you got two chains, you mm -hmm. got the, uh, you got the DJ Khaled, but they, they keep reinventing themselves. The older they get, you think they get younger. <laughs> Yeah, because they, they keep know they smart, yeah, they smart. and they understand in the industry, yeah. and they understand the game, because that's the only way you can make it. You got to you got to move with the trend. It's a yeah. trendsetter type of situation. You got to keep moving with it. So, in in your craft and learning this industry, what artists? Because every artist that start have artists they cater to or kind of listen to. What what are your artists? From that you mm -hmm. looked up to and that listened to growing up. Growing up, it was, mm -hmm. for me, was, so I really started getting into music around that T.I. Urban Legend era, so that's mm -hmm. when it was like T.I., and T.I., mm -hmm. Black One, Street mm -hmm. Road One, like my favorite all time. I'm gonna be um, dropping the album on him. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I'm talking about, I got Street Love One. Yeah. Man, uh, uh, Drake. Yeah. Um, I'm, lately, I've been listening to a lot of lyrical. Like, yeah. Like Big Sean and yeah. people like I'm not even off in the streets, but like mm -hmm. I've been tapping into that. Please. You know, so I've been like Don't really been yourself. like yep. Drake, uh, Kendrick, mm -hmm. uh, Big Sean. Yeah, Kendrick a lot. Thank you. Real strong. Man, he can he can break a song down. Yeah. You know, and you would be talking about what the hell? Yeah. He just told it all in yeah. a whole other format. In a whole other format. Like I really I really sit at home yeah. three four in the morning on my hour and just study. He's yeah. Guy. Yeah. Just study. Yeah, that better your craft. The way they like rich on me, the way they feud, where they break song, make songs. Mm -hmm. I'm not even too much on dudes who big on a like. Oh, I'm about to write this killer sixteen. I be like it's the song, the mm -hmm. song, the whole song. So, mm -hmm. I really so yeah, that was my next question. How do you uh, uh, take your craft when you want to create your music? What what's your downtime? What's your what's your method? Man. Uh, it's always, you know, the beat always talk to you. Of course. Right beat, you know, I get that right beat, I will literally run from everybody because I like to be by myself. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't like That's why I said I be trying to get some of these. I be saying, man, y'all be needing a million people in the room mm -hmm. and it distracts you. You don't lay the song like you're supposed to. Man, this is your profession. Focus on your craft. Yeah, man, I, I, I get mm -hmm. and I, yeah, I focus on, I mean, I got to write the hook first. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's the whole lead of the song. But the yeah. way I write my hook is how would, how would I figure y'all with your women mm -hmm. and my dog, my dog in the street, 
a lot together yeah. to, to say the women gonna enjoy it, the yeah. attention, but you yeah. still want the males yeah. to say, know what, I, I, I fucked with yeah. you. That's what you want, yeah. they say that, I fucked with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I, I basically go into it. You know, I go into it like that, and then I think, I, I try to make my course, I learn simple and catchy, you know what I'm saying? I yeah, mean, I, always, yeah. you know, that's the whole method. Sometimes when you be thinking too hard, yeah, you miss it. You yeah, miss yeah, it yeah. and and you kill the record. But yeah, you know what? Yeah. Simple catch it, man. Yeah, simple don't don't catch overthink it, the process. Yeah, yeah. Just think to what simple it is. Catch it, and and, 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 and then after that, once I get that down, man, I'm not going to do it. It's 16, mm -hmm. ain't nothing to write. You know, ain't nothing to do. Yeah. I'm going straight off the heart and the flow. I'm so that's it. You, you crack as you get there and you be in your zone. You like being by yourself and you look at your, your whole concept, like you said, you study uh, artists of the day to see who's out because you want to try to chart them up. Sure. But know what? I'm gonna bring this up and who's doing successfully well, better than everybody, and even Kendrick Lamar. Um, and he's right, Mecca. Oh, yeah, yeah he's straight that. up independent, no sign to nobody at all. He won four Grammys and they feel he didn't deserve it <laughs> based on Kendrick Lamar. And, uh, what um, I try to tell our culture, because you got to look at it, is white people support white people. Right. And I keep it 100 on my interviews. The white people support white people. So if this guy's with <clears throat> the Grammys, they go off numbers. So Macklemore won them four Grammys on numbers. He sold a lot. Kendrick Lamar has a white fan base, and he has a black fan base. But he also has to have a fan base. The black may not have spin as strongly, so it made his numbers not be there. Cause I guarantee you, he probably got about 10 million motherfuckers that bought his bootleg yeah. before they bought his physical yeah. CD. So they just don't know that play a part. Right. Because there was a lot of controversy going on after the Grammy. Some of Kendrick Lamar was cheated out his you know, awards from Macklemore. But me being behind the scene, and I deal with a lot of the politics, and the business behind the industry and know his numbers. His numbers got him them awards. So how you feel? Cause I, I like uh Drift Shop. That was my jam. I just feel like Drift Shop was my song. At the end of the day <laughs> I like Drift Shop. I just feel like any day numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what people that's gotta what, understand that's, what, that's, what, that's what everything not, based off of his numbers. Because yeah. Macklemore really is the number one person. I see his name everywhere. Yeah he's number one. He's from Washington DC. He's number one in every category in the hip hop industry. Mm -hmm. And and he's not signed to no one, uh, nobody. Right. And so this man is a multi-millionaire right now to this day because I deal with the behind the scenes numbers. And he owes, and he was on the Grammys. Grammys is the hardest show to get in. It's the number one entertainment show throughout the music industry. And that's the hardest show to get on. And to say he, was on it, and you know, the, although Kendrick Lamar is with an independent major, you know, under Drake, I mean, under Dr. Drake. So, um, Macklemore is with nobody, but Kendrick Lamar is with an independent major, which is Dr. Drake, and Dr. Drake is signed to Interscope. So, he is with an independent major, but this guy, he is with nobody. And I said, Lord, let me see his royalty checks. Oh, it's coming to him. He living the life of the king. So I try to educate the artists today is, everybody stop looking for signing the label. Stop going after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not long as iTunes and everybody else giving y'all an opportunity to make y'all own money. If you hot, you, you can't sell 99 too. That's what I be on, 99 cent nigga. So you know. That's what, so I salute Macklemore. I had to bring that up. Because I see what level you on and you know what the business is. And he really is the one that's locking it down. And, and that's why I'm saying, y'all, let these and no discredit. I'm not far from being a racist, but this man came through and changed the game. And he changed the game with the song Drift Show. And I love yeah. it. I love the song. So, with everybody, I always ask this with all artists. Hey, the, the hip hop industry is, is is really big on it and off it. Your tattoos. Mm -hmm. What's up with the tats? What's up with the tats, man? Mm -hmm. I got them. I got most of them in prison. Just you know, they all. Of course, they, we all, You know, they got to mean something. What, yeah, we all, what we your tats all. mean to you? Well, for the most part, I got a lot of uh, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of uh, people that died close to me, my mother. 
uh, little cousins, little home homies. Mm -hmm. um, got a couple of my neighborhood tattoos, I guess, right here. Okay. These are uh, from my uh, mask on, radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mask on. All right, G. So, with all this we talked about and everything, how is it, you know, your new fans, your newcomers, not only your fans can see when they see this, how could they find you? Give me your YouTube. I want your YouTube. YouTube. Hard work jig, straight new word, straight through. Hard work jig. Hard work jig, H A R D W R K J I G. So that's Twitter? Yeah, that's Twitter. Instagram? No, my Instagram is H W underscore G. Alright, look, w so yeah, you you want to you be showing the crazy shit huh? no, on your no, Instagram? I, I keep, I keep it. You, you 50% are you 100? Uh, you, keep you keep 100 or 50? I keep 100. I keep 100 up every site. Yeah, site, so uh, on your Instagram, we ain't going to be saying no crazy ass mask type shit on uh, huh? You know, man, if, if I went to my home with you know, <laughs> my phone and they want to get, you know, yeah. popular for a night or something, <laughs> you know, they'll do it. They'll put a crazy picture of it, but I delete it or something. But okay. For the most part, I can keep one. I keep one on, on the music perspective. Okay. Man. Okay. I don't, you know, a lot of people like I already don't put too much in it because I'm very personal. Mm -hmm. in my personal space, so mm -hmm. I ain't pretending to be using too much. Okay. Yeah. All right. So your Twitter, the same. Yeah, hard work, G. It's hard work, G. Just like the YouTube. All right. So you, you Twitter. I, I actually still be on. A lot of people be like on Twitter. Oh, I've been no, on Twitter. No, it's not. Twitter is. I'm telling you, look, y'all. I'm the industry. Yeah. The industry looks at Twitter. Instagram, see what it is. We don't look at the the game sites. See, like the ones that be like, not the game, not me, no toy game, but we we look at people that takes it serious. Cause I come from the label side and the executive side, so we we pay attention to Twitter, we pay attention to Instagram, and we pay attention to Facebook. Facebook is really hot and people don't know that because it allows you to give more information it allows you to show stuff show your location and stuff so the industry looks at that so on the business side still do it because if you want a promoter or an industry exec or a label exec to check you out that's what they're going to check out they're going to check out your twitter your instagram and your facebook uh, facebook is hard music page mm -hmm. so we can uh, you roll with it throw pictures up mm -hmm. Get it, lock your fans in. Do it. On, put all my videos in there once I so you 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 keep it you keep it one hundred. You yeah. like let them know the thing. Mm -hmm. Also with my talking music business with Carol Dorsey, because you know everybody gotta have a side. It's two sides to me. It's your personal and it's your business. We didn't talk your business, but who is Jig outside of all this here? What person? What kind of person you are? Because you know fans like knowing mm -hmm. the true person outside this music and it helps them this person. I'm a person who, you know, I'm a grown man. I'm still trying to find my way, you know, but at the same time, I'm, I'm a person with a big heart, too, sometimes too big, care for everybody, or I think I can protect everybody around me. Um, I think I'm kind of misunderstood because of, you know, my the persona, you know, the guys I run with, the neighborhood I come from, you know, uh, you know, sometimes the way I come off because I'm quick to resolve the issue. I'm very misunderstood as far as like a rough around the edge, just like super tough. You know, and that's not really, I'm actually uh, very, 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 like when it comes to people around me, I'm very sensitive. You know, I can deal with somebody doing something to me, but I can't take when somebody do something to somebody I love. You know what I'm saying? So, for the most part, and I'm afraid I can sound personal. I'm very, very personal. Like, I really don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't. You gotta be. I got. You gotta work your way up to get close to me because mm -hmm. of the, my past. You know, everybody know. Not I, I, from Detroit. We all have a, a rough life. But I, I had a real. I had a, I had a real, real. I came from some stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, I overcame all that. And the one thing about me, I want people to know is, I'm trying to. Everything that people thought of me, you know, I'm, I'm showing them and I'm aiming to prove them different. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm doing. You know, and for the most part, and uh, and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm passionate. Mm -hmm. yep. Whatever it is I do, I'm passionate. That's how I am. You yeah. got it. That's how you show and get recognized. You know, when you when you believe in something, you're passionate in it. And everybody say, well, damn, we'll care how people know you. They get to know because I'm passionate about what I do. And people come. That's it. It comes that way. Well, definitely, it's, it's always a pleasure. And, you know, being to work with your manager, uh, Chanel, talking with her and then hearing your music. It made me want to uh, interview you and then, you know, hearing your name come out here. Because this level silly shit. Yeah, you get to me, it's level silly. Yeah, it's level silly. So I, I, I had to, 
I feel that I had to reach out to get your story because, you know, you got a story to tell and you're making moves in this industry. And, you know, like I tell everybody, the industry ain't for everybody. It's not. It's not, it's not for everybody. We all wants to be famous. Shoot, I wish I could be Diana Ross. But I can't say it. I ain't gonna fake it. So, you know, so a lot of people out here uh, are, are imitators and don't realize it's not meant for them. So that's why my show, Talking Music Business with Carol Dorsey, I give people the knowledge they need to make it in this industry because if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, it's not. Watch all these interviews of people I'm interviewing to educate yourself, to see, you know what? I want somebody to sit back and say, this ain't for me. Because sometimes you got to sit down and say, you know what? This ain't for me. This, this, this not my world. Me, part of the industry, I educate, and I'm, I'm very good with marketing, and promotion, and, and developing all this. That's my gift to the industry. So, you know, your gift is to relate your music, man, and I think you got it. So, salute to you. I, I'm, I'm expecting to see many more um, from you, and hey, don't forget about us little people. Nah, nah, nah. Don't forget <laughs> about us little people. Nah. Hey, hey, that, I won't be able to say, I know him, I know nah, him. I'm not, that's one thing, I'm so, yeah. I'm so humble. None of this, I just, it just made me more, more hungry. It be people. Come on, my man. Hey, how are you? I'm trying to get to where you at, bro. I'm like, get to where I'm at. I'm nowhere. I'm trying to. But if you can still walk, if you can still drive on seven miles, see me, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't nowhere. No. I'm, just, I'm just thankful for the know, opportunity. The opportunity. That's it. Well, so what advice? This is the last, this is the end of all. What advice you can give these? Promote yourself. Push yourself. Don't come into this game thinking people are going to help you and owe you anything. Because nobody owe you nothing. Ain't nobody. You got to think, we in Detroit. And all of a sudden, every other person is rapping. Yep. So, keep, I, get you, keep the ideas to yourself. Stay stay humble. <laughs> stay working. You know, and, promote, promote your, and, then, and one more thing. I really want to yeah. tell people this. Because mm -hmm. I learned this. Remember, man, whatever you put into this earth, it, 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 it's a representation of you. So whatever you put out here, make sure the quality is A1. Do not be in no basement studio or try to shoot no video on somebody's iPhone and throw it out here on this earth because that's gonna make people make it. They ain't doing it. And, and, and for real, I'm, like, I'm just being real. I see that's it all what the time. I want. I'm Keep like, you, you, you gotta make your, your that's you, that's your work. Mm -hmm. I see people, you might you might be a lyrical genius. Yes. But if you come on my timeline. With a, uh, with a basement production or an iPhone video, I ain't watching it. I'm just not. Let's keep it real. I'm just being one of That's what I do, man. Put your, uh, spend your money on your on your talent. That's what I did. Like, yeah. All of them trips I was doing, all that, I put my money on me to this music. You can't do it. Y'all better listen, because this is for real. <laughs> all right, thank you, Jig. It was a pleasure. Thank you. I appreciate all right. it. All righty.